Welcome to Edible Gardening Made Easy. I'm Alex Mitchell, a gardening writer, journalist, and self-confessed edible gardening obsessive. Over the next four lectures, I'll be taking you through the basics of growing fruit and vegetables, from how to prepare the soil to the best crops to grow, tips for how to cultivate them, and ways to avoid pests eating them before you can. Even if you have never sown a seed in your life, this course will give you the confidence to grow delicious salads, herbs, tomatoes, carrots, and much more, whether you have a huge garden or room only for a few pots. As I hope this course will show, you really don't need masses of time or space to grow great crops. Growing your own fruit and veg has never been more popular. Back at the turn of the millennium when I discovered my obsession, I kept my tomato grow bags rather quiet. The only people growing their own veg in those days seemed to be middle-aged men, brewing red currant wine in the allotment shed to get away from their wives. Ten or so years later, and we are in the grip of a growing your own revolution. Everyone's doing it. Allotments have never been more sought after, and those tired of waiting for one, such as me, are now turning their back gardens into productive grow zones, intermingling their tulips with sun-warmed tomatoes and glossy chard. Maybe we've all just woken up to the fact that homegrown crops taste better. But I think there's more to it. Growing food gives us a satisfying connection to the soil and the seasons, particularly for those of us who live in cities. This course takes you through a whole growing year, so you can sow and plant as we go. This first lecture gets you all set for planting. We'll cover how to assess your growing site, soil preparation and digging, as well as an introduction to composting and wormeries. Lecture 2 covers sowing and runs through lots of delicious easy crops to try. Future lectures will cover summer and finally autumn and winter. I'm not going to cover every fruit and vegetable crop you can possibly grow. You may notice omissions such as main crop potatoes, asparagus, cabbage, Brussels sprouts and turnips. I've left some out because they're tricky for beginners. Others because I don't think they give enough back when you grow them at home. This might be because they take up too much space or don't deliver taste-wise over shop-bought versions. Instead, I've chosen crops that will work even in small spaces. Those that taste superior can be grown with relative ease and that will reward you with a plentiful, beautiful harvest. All the gardening methods in this course are organic. There are no nasty chemicals and all the advice here is geared towards creating a garden run on organic lines. So, let's get on with preparing your edible Eden. You might be wondering if preparing soil is necessary. It can seem like a hassle when you really want to get on with the glamorous part of gardening, the planting. But it really is worth doing because as the gardening veterans say, look after your soil and the plants will look after themselves. If your soil is fertile, weed-free and holds moisture well without becoming waterlogged, your plants won't need feeding or watering as often. You won't have to be in competition with weeds for space, water and nutrients, and they'll also be less susceptible to pests and diseases. In no area of gardening is this perhaps more important than when growing fruit and vegetables. Edible crops are often hungry feeders, meaning they take a lot of goodness out of the ground, so they really need fertile soil to grow well. So, how do you get your soil into good shape? Maybe you inherited it from a lovely old gent who spent the past 30 years digging in manure, clearing weeds and removing stones, leaving you with perfect tilth that you can merely touch with the seed and cause a productive edible jungle to grow. But probably not. Chances are your allotment is waste-high in weeds and your garden a rectangle of boggy lawn flanked by limping shrubs, badly drained soil and a healthy army of weeds. Here's mine before I started work on it. And here's what it looks like now. Raspberries, fruit trees, grapes and a whole lot more packed into a tiny city space. But before you start digging, you'd better choose where to grow your crops. Generally, fruit and vegetable plants require sun to grow well. So your ideal location for your veg patch or containers is a sunny, sheltered spot away from trees or hedges. Take a good look at your garden over a few days, observing how the sun travels across the sky, bearing in mind it rises in the east and sets in the west. Work out which way your garden faces and which bits of the garden get the most sun. 
Remember that the sun is higher in the sky in the summer than it is in winter, so areas that may be in shade in winter could be in full sun in the summer. In the northern hemisphere, south-facing gardens get the most sun, north-facing ones the least. East-facing gardens get morning light and west-facing ones get afternoon and evening light. Avoid windy areas if you can and beware of shade cast by fences, buildings or trees. Dappled or partial shade is not too much of a problem to edible crops, but full shade is tricky. If you have a large space, you'd be best to choose a sunny shelter spot for your veg patch. But if, like me, your space is limited, you'll have to work with what you've got, putting sun-loving plants in the warm bits and cooler-tolerant crops in the shady bits.